Hi folks, Damon here. One of the things that we just launched is Code Whisperer support in EMR Studio. And one of the other things that we just launched recently is interactive notebooks from EMR Studio with EMR Serverless. So I want to show you how you can go from zero to a Spark Code Whisperer in about five minutes. Let's go ahead and get started. I've already created an EMR Studio and I'm going to create an EMR Serverless application from scratch. So here I am on the EMR console with EMR Serverless. I'm just going to go ahead and click the Get Started button right here to create my EMR Serverless application. I'll just call it Whisper. I'll leave the default settings as Spark with EMR 615. And then I'll check the default settings for interactive workloads. That gives me some pre-initialized capacity so my workloads can start quickly and also enables the interactive endpoint on my EMR serverless application. So I'll go ahead and click Create and Start Application. Now my application is created and it's starting, it's spinning up a driver and a couple executors so I can connect with my notebook. So now, let me go ahead and go into my EMR Studio workspace. I've already got a demo workspace here, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And that launches my managed notebook. I'm gonna go over here to the EMR connections tab and connect to my new EMR serverless application. So you can see there is my Whisper application and I'll choose my EMR serverless job role to attach uh, to my serverless application. So what that means is that job role is used for all of my data access when I'm connected to that EMR serverless application from my notebook. So that's going to go ahead, connect to my EMR serverless application, and then reload the window when it's all done. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and launch a new PySpark notebook. And what I want to do is just read some data and do some analysis of one of my favorite data sets and see how Code Whisperer can help us do that. So uh, I'm going to do a read of this NOAA Global Hourly PDS bucket. This is uh, weather information that is recorded hourly uh, on different weather stations across the globe by NOAA, and it's part of the registry of open data on AWS. So I'm going to read uh, about the past 20 years of data from a weather station in Seattle, and we'll just do some quick analysis of that and see how Code Whisper can help us. Awesome. You can see we've got quite a few columns here, um, but just to call out a few, we've got our station ID here. Uh, there is a timestamp column. We've got our latitude and longitude, the actual name of the weather station. And then we've got the field that we're most concerned about here is this AA1 field. So let's do, um, let's do a little bit of exploration and um, pull out that AA1 field. So let's create a new, new cell here. And even when we do a comment there, say how many records do we have? Uh, you can see the code whisper completion going down there and it provided us an autocomplete suggestion. So I can go ahead and autocomplete that. Uh, just use tab to autocomplete that and it does a quick df.count. So I can see that for our data set here, I've got a couple hundred thousand records that I'm going to look at. I just want to pull out the um, date and AA1 columns and look at those really quickly. So I'll do a df.select date and then aa1.show. And specifically, you can see here on this AA1 column, there's a few different fields that are embedded into this column. There's an observation period, which is the amount of hours. There is the rainfall depth in millimeters, and that's also scaled to 10. Um, and then we've got a couple other things there. So what we want to do is we want to split that AA1 column. So I'm going to go df.select uh, date. I want to pull that out, and I want to do an f.split. And uh, let's see. You can see here that Code Whisperer already gives me, um, you know, a couple different suggestions, and I sees that I can split by the comma there. So I'm going to split by the comma, and I also want to make sure I take the uh, first value of that and then alias that to my observation period. So do a quick df dot show there, and um, just because I haven't imported my functions yet. Uh, I'll import those functions there. So there is my observation period. And then I want to do uh, one more extraction from here, which is the uh, observation depth. So I'll just pull that out really quickly. And we'll pull out the second column there and we'll say observation uh, depth in millimeters. Great, so now I've got a couple columns there. And I just need to do a little bit of filtering. So um, 
you know, uh, what I actually want to do is we'll do a df.select. I'll take this whole thing here. And we're going to create a new data frame. And in addition to, let me do a quick format here, apply black formatter. So we'll do a df.select, and then we want to do a df.filter. And we'll say f.call observation period. We'll do an autocomplete here, but what I actually want to do is I want to say, I want to make sure observation period is equal to one hour. So we've got our df2 there, and we've got an observation um, uh, period that we're filtering out by one hour. And then let's go ahead and convert that um, date column to a timestamp. So I'll do that uh, with column timestamp, and we'll take uh, f.call date. And you can see again, there's Code Whisper making things easier for me. So we'll do a df2.show. And there we go. Now, the last thing that uh, I just want to show really quickly that is super helpful, we've got this observation depth in millimeters here. And I can just type in a comment that says, you know, convert observation depth um, to inches. And I don't want to have to look up that conversion. I don't know it off the top of my head. And you can see there, thank you, Code Whisper, for giving me that conversion factor and also filling in the correct column name there, even though I didn't put it right there. Um, and this is scaled by a factor of 10, so I would do a divide by 10 there too. That's just some context about the data that I have myself. And you can see here, uh, we're getting that new column. So uh, that's all I wanted to show right now, uh, just how easy it is for Code Whisper to do some auto completions for you inside of EMR Studio. Hope you enjoyed that. Go ahead, check it out, and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.